When you're making a tutorial video, recording your screen, showing how to do something on a website or how to use a certain software, it's really handy to be able to emphasize certain parts of the web page or the software application. The point is to make it easier for your viewer to see what you're talking about and know exactly where you're telling them to click or enter something or whatever. Filmora has some really useful tools for this and I'll show you some of them right now. So I'm in Filmora 14 on desktop for PC. On my timeline, I just have an image. This isn't a video, it's an image, but it would work the same way if we had a video down here. This is a screenshot of the image editor in OpenArt. I picked this because it's got a lot of stuff going on and plenty of places for us to add emphasis. For instance, maybe we want to draw attention to this menu across the top. The simplest thing we could do is zoom in and then zoom out using keyframes. To do that, I'll move the playhead to where I want to start the zoom. Let's say it's right about there. Over on the right under image and basic, I'm going to click this diamond next to transform, which will add a keyframe. That'll sort of lock in the size and position where it is right now. And then I'll advance forward maybe about five frames. Then I'll click the diamond again to add another keyframe. You can see those down here on the clip. And then under scale, I'll zoom that in a bit drag this down into position. And now this top menu is a lot more visible. To see what that looks like, I'll take the playhead back to the beginning and click the play button to preview. It's at the normal 100% size. And then when it hits the keyframes, it zooms in. If we want to zoom back out from that at some point, let's say maybe down here, we'll just put our playhead here where we want to start the zoom out. I'll click the diamond next to transform again to add another keyframe. I use my right arrow key on my keyboard to move forward about five frames, add another keyframe. And now if I want to go back to the original, I don't really have to use this slider or type in a number. I can just hit this arrow circle reset button here to bring it back to 100. That brings the scale back to the original 100%. And then I can click the circle arrow button next to position to bring it back into its original position. So we'll take our playhead back a little bit. Here's where we had it zoomed in. And then where we put the keyframes, it zooms back out to its normal size. But maybe I want to keep the whole screen present and I just want this menu itself zoomed in. So let's get rid of these keyframes and just right click and say delete all keyframes. Now the whole clip is going to stay at its original 100%. Up top, let's click effects. And then over on the left under video effects, come down to where you find AI infographic. Click that and you should see these fellas. We'll grab this one that's called Smart Text Magnifier. I'll just drag that down onto the track above my video. I'm going to move my playhead over into the center of it so that I can really see what it's doing because it does have a little ease in there where it starts out invisible and then it sort of zooms in or fades into place. So I'll come in the middle where I know it's at its peak. Now I don't want to zoom in on this guy's face and the steam off his coffee. So I'll just click in here where it's magnified. I get this nice little box and I can click and drag this anywhere I want. So somewhere around here is going to be a good place to start. I'll drop that and I can either adjust this using these little handles on the screen or over on the right with the scale. Scale X is horizontal and Y is vertical. I want to make sure I'm covering everything in that menu. Looks like I need to move it over a little bit. Drag it in this end just a smidge and maybe not so tall. Bring the bottom up and bring the top down. I can also adjust the corner roundness with this little slider. If I don't want my magnification to have sharp edges, I can change the magnify level with this slider by dragging it to the right and makes it bigger. Dragging it to the left makes it smaller. But if I drag too far to the right and make the magnification too big, I'll need to go make an adjustment on my selection box. So I need to come back up here and change this because it's not capturing the whole menu. We'll take it there on the right, drag this out to the left, and we need to adjust to the right again, and we might not be able to get this all in at that magnification level. Yeah, that's looking a little too big. So let's bring that down a bit. That's pretty good. And now we'll readjust our selection box again. There we go. The next adjustment is opacity. And this is the amount it's gonna darken the part that's not selected or being magnified. So if you take it to zero, it magnifies the section that we selected, but it doesn't darken any of the other part that's not selected. The default is 50, which is pretty good, but you can make it even darker by just sliding it to the right. We'll stay at 50. The zoom in and zoom out are the ease settings and those tell it how fast you want to go from what it was originally to this magnified point. So we're going to leave those right where they are. We'll drag our playhead back to the beginning of the video, play through a preview. It's the original video or original screenshot. It zooms in, does the magnification. 
stays as long as we have this effect on, and then it goes out. Now, if we needed this magnification to stay on longer, we can just come down and click the right side of the clip, drag it out to wherever we need it to stop. If we need to shorten it, we can just drag it in. If we need it to start sooner, left click on the start of the clip and drag it wherever you need it to start and stop. And maybe while I have this menu magnified, I wanna circle one of the items on the menu. For that, I could use the smart circle. This is also under effects and AI infographics. We just drag that down to the timeline and we'll put it on the top track. It just drops the circle in the middle at its default size. We'll just click on it and drag it up about where we want it. And you can adjust the size and position either by using these handles right on the preview screen, or you can do it over here on the right using the scale and position. So I can click anywhere in this Y value, just click and drag it to the left or the right to make it taller or shorter. Do the same thing with the X, click in that area, move it to the left to make it narrower or the right to make it wider. We'll go right about there. Then for position, we'll work with that a little bit, maybe right about there. You can change the color and it gives you two colors to work with. So if we pick this blue for color one and then leave color two as yellow, I'll come down to the timeline and drag the playhead back and scrub through it and you'll see where it starts out yellow and then it has a blue section and then it's back to yellow. If you want the whole circle to be the same color, just select the same color under both of these options. We'll drag our playhead back and now we've got an all blue circle there. You can adjust the thickness, you can give it a glow, adjust the shadow strength and the speed and that's how fast it'll draw itself into a circle. So if we scrub back through here, I'll just start here and hit play and we'll preview it. That's a pretty slow moving circle. We probably want to move much faster than that. So we'll hit the reset and take it back to its default 90. Now also you might have noticed here that when we play through that we've got a little mismatch in the timing. So the circle starts to appear before the magnification fully takes effect. To fix that we'll just take our playhead, we'll scrub through and look for when it's fully magnified which is right about there. And then I'll click on our smart circle click and drag the left edge in, go back and play, and it should be looking good now. Yep, that looks good. Now, our smart circle is gonna keep on going long after our text magnification ends, and we don't want that to happen, so we would probably want to come back to right before that starts to shrink, maybe right about there, click on our smart circle, drag it in. We'll just start from about the middle here and see how that looks. We've got our circle on our magnification, and as we play through, the circle disappears, then the magnification goes away. So that works pretty good. If we want to draw attention to something without magnifying it, we also have a smart highlight and a smart text spotlight. We're still under effects and AI infographic. The smart highlight, again, you just drag it onto your timeline, then click and drag it wherever you want it. Say we wanted to highlight this start a blend board button up here on the upper left, and then adjust the size by clicking and dragging the handles. Now to see what that looks like, I'll click on my timeline right before that starts and click play, and then it highlights that button. The settings on the right, of course, you can change the scale and position by changing these numbers or clicking and dragging to make it larger or smaller. You can also rotate it if you need it to be at an angle. We don't need that for this. So I'm gonna hit the reset and take it back to zero. You can change the color to anything you want. If you need a different color than what you see here, click the more option and set whatever color you can imagine. There's three different modes for this. You can drag this selector over to the right. There's the second mode. Notice that does more of highlighting the text. This is like a multiply effect. It highlights the text, but it doesn't do too much in the darker colors. The third mode, all the way on the right, pretty much blocks out the entire thing. And that's probably not what you want to do. But you can also adjust the strength. And bringing the strength down, which is really the opacity, really just turns this kind of into option one. So let's just go back to option one. We'll bring our strength back up pretty high. We can adjust the speed. That's how fast it wipes across. And you can also adjust the shape. So we've got this rectangle going on, this Second option makes it a, what is that called? A parallelogram. Everything works the same. We just have different angles on the corners. And the third shape looks more like a magic marker or highlighter swipe with those rough edges. Now the smart highlight works okay for this, but it really works better when you have a light background and a darker contrasting text or object that you're trying to highlight. Another option is the smart text spotlight. So let's drop our playhead out here, drag in the smart text spotlight. I'm gonna move my playhead back to the middle of that clip so I can see what it's gonna look like. Click on it. Oh, I didn't click on it, I clicked on the video, so let's click on it for sure. Maybe this time I'm talking about this toolbar over here to the left of the image, so I can drag this over, adjust 
across the size and position of it to just include that. Drag it back over here where it doesn't get off the page on us. Maybe something like that. Now let's go back and preview what that looks like. So I'm talking about this menu and then it sort of dulls everything else out and highlights that particular menu. So, you know, that's the menu I'm referring to. An arrow is another handy way to point at exactly what you're talking about. Drag this one to the timeline. This is smart arrow two. Maybe I want to be pointing out this edit button over on the left hand menu so I can drag my arrow over there. I think my arrow is way too big. Since I want it to stay proportional, I'm going to click one of the corners here and drag it in. That way I don't squish my arrow. We'll do that at the opposite corner and then put it back into position. You can change the color of your arrow. Make the edge a whole lot bigger if that's what you want to do. Change the color of the outline. Adjust the thickness of the outline. Change the angle of the outline. Adjust the shadow. Change the shadow color. And add some glow to it. And last but not least, if you want to be able to see through your arrow, you can drag the opacity down. And now you're not blocking anything underneath it. The other smart arrow has all the same options and settings and works in the same way. It just starts off as a yellow arrow by default, but of course you could change that to any color you want. And it starts off pointing to the right instead of pointing to the left like the green arrow. But of course with the rotate option over here in the settings, you can have your arrow point anywhere you want it to. Now let's get rid of some of this stuff to make some room for more tools. And let's cruise on down past the stopwatches, the location, the like icon, and look at a couple of these lines. You got smart square line 01, which is solid, and 02. We'll grab a smart square line 01, drag it down here, bring our playhead back. Select that and maybe now we're talking about the prompt box. So we drag this over and put it around our prompt box, adjust it to be whatever size we need it to be for that. Bring in this left edge and maybe bring the top down. Oops, bring the top down a little bit more. The options we have here are the scale and the position. You can also rotate it. You can change the thickness. The default is actually a little bit thick for this particular spot. So let's maybe make that just a, a smidge smaller. You've got two colors you can work with. The default is white but you can change those to anything you want. You can make both colors the same or two entirely different colors. When we play through, our line appears. It doesn't do anything fancy, no movement or anything like that. Of course, if you wanted to have it scale up, you could do that using keyframes like we did in the beginning with the screenshot. The smart square line 02, let's drag that on. This is, of course, the dashed line. With it on our timeline, we can just click on it, drag it wherever we want. Maybe we want this down on this little bottom menu and setting box. We'll drag in the left and the right until we get that positioned kind of where we want it. That seems a little bit too much. Let's go right about there. In addition to the scale, position, and rotation, of course you can change the color here. Adjust the thickness. A little thinner would probably work better for this. The density, adjust how much space you want between the dashes so we can have them really close together with just some little breaks or we can have them really far apart with lots of space between them. And this effect has a built-in animation that you can adjust which is shake. So if we leave shake at zero, scrub through there, you see it's just static. It just appears and it stays there. If we move that shake up, now it dances around a little bit while it's on the screen. Some of the other effects you have in here are like bar charts, line charts, progress bars, and countdowns. Again, these are all under the effects, AI infographic effects. There are some other magnify effects. Those are under effects and then distortion. We have the plain old magnify. We'll drag that on. Now this one doesn't let you click and drag it. You see I'm dragging my underlying screenshot there. Even if I select magnify on the timeline, when I come up here and try to move it, it's not happening. So to move this one around, I have to have it selected, then come over on the right and use the center X and center Y sliders to move it somewhere. X is left and right, Y is up and down. You can change the radius and you can change the zoom rate, but it can only be a circle. You can change the border color, the thickness of the border, and the transparency of the border. There's a few similar effects like that in here, like dash magnifier, and the only difference with that one is it has a dashed border instead of a solid border. Let's clear out our smart square lines and move our playhead back a little bit. We can also add shapes like rectangle, arrow, ellipse, triangle, or line right here from this little button above the timeline. 
click this button and click rectangle and then come up here and draw wherever you want your rectangle to be. Maybe we'll be talking about the model this time. So we'll put our rectangle there and about that size. And now we're gonna have to make some adjustments. Of course, we can do the scale position and rotation from here. We can also adjust the corner radius so we don't have sharp corners. You can flip and rotate, but the thing we really wanna do at this point is probably get rid of this fill or bring it way down. Maybe we wanna have some kind of a little highlight there. We could also go from a color fill to a gradient fill and then pick the two colors that we wanna use. I think I'd rather just turn the fill off altogether and come down and focus on this border to make a rectangle. So I'll drop down the color, pick a different color. You can change the opacity or transparency. You can adjust the blur and the thickness of your line. Ooh, that's way too thick. And you can add a drop shadow. Just toggle that on, select the type of shadow that you want, the angle, the color, the distance, how far away it should be, whether it should be blurry or not, and the opacity. Using the same button right above the timeline there where it shows the square, you can also pick an arrow. It doesn't automatically drop these things on your timeline. It just puts you in drawing mode. So you go wherever you wanna draw your arrow, click, drag, and release, and now you've got an arrow. You can adjust all the settings over on the right, all the same ones we had for the rectangle, including the fill, the border, add a drop shadow if you want. These two little yellow points you can use these to make the stem of your arrow skinnier or thicker without adjusting the arrow head and then this little yellow box adjusts the head of the arrow notice that this icon looked like a square now since the last thing we used is an arrow it now looks like an arrow but all the drawing tools are under there so we could also use this to add a circle or ellipse a triangle or a line and if you decide to draw a line if we want to underline something you'll have some additional settings like whether you want the line to start with an arrow a triangle or a circle, how you want it to end, whether you want it to be solid or dashed, and then all the same settings that we had for the other shapes. And for any of these shapes that you created using the drawing tools, if you don't want them to just appear, you do have some animation options. Just select the shape on the timeline and then over on the right, we've been working in the basic panel, but switch over to animation and you can have it fade in, slide in, or any animation you want. You can either double click this animation to apply it to your clip, or you could drag it down. And you'll see you have these little diamonds down here. Those are keyframes. So it's gonna start this fade in at the very first frame right there. And then it will be fully apparent by this frame right here. Now, if we drag this on, instead of double clicking to apply it, let me take it back off. If I drag this on, where I drop it on this clip really matters because if I bring it to the middle, if I just drop it right there, you can see there's a line on the clip. If I just drop it right there. That's where it's going to apply that animation. So even though my clip shows that the rectangle is there and it's there, it doesn't start fading in until we get to this keyframe. Then it starts fading in and is fully apparent at this point. Now you can adjust that by clicking this first diamond, just click that, drag it all the way over to the left to the first frame. And then you'll probably wanna drag this one in so that it doesn't take forever for it to fade in. That should have us fixed up. Yep, we seem to be fading in okay there. Those are some of the handy dandy tools and effects that I found in Filmora 14 to help me add emphasis and show people what I'm talking about when I make tutorial videos. My name is Bob. I appreciate you hanging out with me for this video and I hope you'll come back and see me in another one.